Now, images of masculinity can tell us much about society, not only about gender, but about politics and social life. In his ability to analyze the gender division, Mossy was way ahead of his time. Scholars were only beginning to recognize gender as an important historical variable. In many ways, then, Mossy's ideas at the time were pioneering. Taking up and developing novel historical approaches, he tried to understand the cultural expressions of nationalism and their links to sexuality and gender. George Mossy has a very distinct way of doing history drawing up a literature, art, memorial monuments. He puts low and high culture in a historical and political transnational perspective. Mossy tries to bring together different elements of a subject that was known, but was not particularly um, seen or discussed as one. George Mossy's discussion of normative masculinity preceded much of the historical, sociological and theoretical work on what is today called masculinity studies or the history of masculinity. Mossy explained nationalism and fascism in general and masculinity in particular in terms of ideology and culture rather than of social structure and the economy. That to date his history of masculinity is one of the first and perhaps the most systematic deconstruction that we use to this day about how we understand how gender roles work. Moses' work showed us that manhood is historical, it changes over time, and that it is not natural but socially constructed. It would seem to me that, you know, a kind of normative masculinity, uh, as Mossy puts it, is immensely malleable and yet at the same time depressingly resilient. To ask questions about the relationship of these movements to those of the past that sought to remake man and womanhood to connect a system or order of gender relations to worldviews relating to nationhood and race. No one has taught us more about pursuing cultural history in this way than George Mossett.